In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the radio transfer program in the SPEC-PR system. Specifically, I'm going to show the command line interface and how to make scripts. I'm going to compute um, a simple um, one-component spectrum and then a two-component spectrum. Okay, I'm <coughs> I'm uh, I have two windows set up, and uh, I have very little screen real estate because I'm making this as a uh, a 1080p video. Normally, I would use much larger windows. So I'm I set up a directory that has um, a spec PR restart file and a spec PR file that I can write results to. These Java routines are for the next video to, to make a uh, um, to illustrate the, the GUI interface. Right now I'm just doing the command line interface. I have another directory where I have my optical constants and I have I have my optical constants here and I have some support files here. Now, um, RadTran does not assign files or directory uh, that uh, that needs to be done in SpecPR. So we have a restart file here. Restart files are simple ASCII files, and we have the our test file assigned. We have the optical constants assigned and our support uh, assigned. So first. Uh, so we're, this is all set up. If you uh, need to um, learn how to set those up, there's previous videos in the Tet Quarter Spec PR series that'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to, if we needed to start Spec PR, and I always use an alias, run Spec PR, and DSpec PR is the latest developmental that has all the newest features. Uh, at the moment, most of the time, um, like on uh, PSI's PAN spectroscopy computer, um, DSpecPR and SpecPR are the same. And on my laptop here that I'm doing this, they're the same, so it doesn't matter. Um, the Xterm2 is a double size from the default, and it makes a, a pretty large window for viewing spectra. Unfortunately, with a small screen real estate, there will be overlap here. Um, so you can see we have the, uh, the SPS0000 file and, and the uh, 01 file assigned and our test assigned. So we don't need to do anything else in terms of setup. Um, and we can go ahead and start uh, RadTran. And similarly, we can I have a, a uh, an alias set up so I can quickly start these programs. So starting RadTran, restart file, the X terminal, um, X window size if you don't if you want something larger than the default. Okay. So <coughs> um, we see that we have our, our files assigned. There are multiple options here uh, for computing reflectance spectra of multi-component mixtures. Uh, generally, the capital R is, um, is what I use. It's got some of the latest features that the lowercase r is an older version and doesn't have um, uh, embedded intimate molecular and aerial mixtures. Um, the way we're going to run today, this will default to, to the r. If you want to do layered components, here's a two-layer um, uh <coughs> two mixture, which has all the features of the capital R plus layers. If you want to compute uh, in another medium, um, so uh, for example, uh, this was developed for, for oil, oil and water, but could also work for uh, like a, a spectrum of a rock where the the um, you have mineral grains embedded in quartz or something like that. 
This is more experimental. Uh, the equations look solid. The initial testing has been done, but I have not computed a rock spectrum, for example, and compared it to, to um, an actual measured re uh, reflectance spectrum of a rock. So if you're interested in that, uh, we can work on that. Uh, if you want to derive absorption coefficients from a uh, reflectance spectrum, use this. And then uh, this is an older um, unmixing uh, uh, routine, which uh, I haven't used in quite a few years, so uh, we'd have to look at uh, how it's working these days with other changes and make sure it's still still OK. So for now, <coughs> the, oh, there's also uh, uh, different options for how the computations are done and these describe uh, you can look at Hepke's 2012 book page 59 and page 60 or the 1981 to see how uh, the um, grain internal and external reflections are done and that has to do with with uh, solutions for Snell's law so for now we're going to do capital R now before let me uh, X remember in in uh, spec PR a capital a, a X is a hard exit go back to the beginning we're also going to record all our commands so uh, if you do a greater than sign and um, uh, we'll just call it model one and if you want to it, it's a simple ASCII text file you can do dot text but in general uh, you don't need that. Uh, so this will record all the commands that we enter, and we can play them back uh, at another time, including modifying the file. So that uh, effectively makes a script. So we're going to do capital R again. We're going to compute uh, reflectance. This, the only option here is a one. This is a placeholder for other options the wavelengths. So we need to know the wavelengths. So let's um, print the S spec PR files are binary, so you've got to run a program to, to view them. So the wavelengths are in record six. So, and remember, if we go back up to the beginning, SPS 000 is assigned to the letter V. So capital V6 are wavelengths. We don't need to de delete any channels. Um, <coughs> we're going to do uh, a one component, so a pure, um, a pure surface. So one, and I should be adding in um, comments here, and I'll do that uh, for this point. So S and a comment, uh, single set of N, N and K. So the, this says the real index of refraction. So we're going to do H2O ice. So that's these two spectra right here. So the index of refraction is 51, V51. We should say what it is. So one one way to do this would be to just copy the whole title, uh, at least up to there. That's the important part. Then, now it's asking for the absorption coefficient. So that is V62. And we have the grain size in centimeters. That's 50 microns. The weight fraction, since it's one, uh, just one component, it doesn't matter what this is. So the, the weight fraction has to be one. Uh, and the density, density of ice is uh, about 0.95. I don't, don't remember the exact value, but that's pretty close. It doesn't matter since it's a single component. So we should. Um, comment this 
Okay, now the angle of incidence in emission or geometric albedo. Um, I commonly do zero degrees incidence and 30 degree emission. We'll want to normalize. What this does is it computes a Lambert surface that's a pure scattering surface and makes that a, a, a reflectance of one. Otherwise, you'll get um, one over pi if you want. So we're really computing uh, reflectance factor, not uh, the reflectance which maxes at one over pi. Um, <coughs> In the Hepke equations, there's a, an S value for scattering. Um, the default in the program that works for many situations uh, is just fine, so we press return. We should have commented that. Um, grain size dependent parameters, so um, the S value increases slightly as you go to shorter wavelengths, because the yeah, shorter wavelengths are more susceptible uh, to scattering. So we'll use the default here, and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so the calculation is um, most of the calculations are done. We can skip the first surface reflection if we. Uh, if we want in, in a, for a case where you have a non-particulate surface, uh, but the surface is, uh, say, glassy smooth, and the angle you're viewing, you wouldn't see that first surface reflection. So we, we want to include that. So, no, and F. You can add in an aerial mixture, uh, but we're not going to do that. Then an output title. So this is a 50 micron grain size. Um, there's a history that gives all the detail, but if you're doing um, you can fill up the, the title, you have 40 characters, so I equals 0, E equals 30, uh, those are the main parameters. And uh, SpecPR carries a database of, of different types of spectra, so if you include CMP REF for computed reflectance spectra, uh, that'll be cataloged and you can find it later. Uh, or you know when you see an H2O at 50 microns, and I should have said what the 50 microns is. And y you could also spell it out grain size equals 50 microns, but soon you'll, as you get more complex, you'll run out of space in the 40 character title. Um, <coughs> It's good to know that this is a computed spectrum as opposed to a laboratory reflectance spectrum of an actual sample. Okay, here's our, our spectrum. Um, <coughs> let me change the scale, 0 to 1. So there's the spectrum computed from um, down in the UV 0.2 to um, beyond 6 microns. The the question is, do we want to have uh, a comparison to another uh, another spectrum? Let's see. So here's a, uh, let's do a, the B ring spectrum and 
that was um, uh, SPS 0001 was assigned to um, to you so and so 141 and over here is the wavelength pointer U6 so the red spectrum here is the B ring spectrum now you see these are very very different um, it's actually curious that they match out here but not at the shorter wavelengths so let's there's something that brings the um, reflectance down from um, <coughs> from the um, uh, you know from the pure ice spectrum so let's uh, we can go ahead and write that so if we exit and um, we're going to write to SP test one, so W, so W, and then put the history into W also. So now we're back to the beginning. So we can, if we do greater than sign and return, the recording of all that data um, <coughs> is uh, now closed. So we can write to another file. Um, we can, let me, we can control Z spec PR and look at what we just wrote so here's all our commands as we type them in so we can now modify these you know like change the grain size and and other parameters and then read this back into spec Radtran or spec PR and uh, have those commands executed but let's um, so I control Z that, that through the program in the background. If you type jobs on a Linux machine, uh, you see your, your job, FG, foreground. We're back to the beginning. So we didn't have to exit the program. So we're going to do this again, only this time we're going to um, model 2. <coughs> capital R um, V6 is the wavelengths no delete of channels okay we're going to do a two component mixture so type today <coughs> okay now we need to go back to our uh, okay we want to do our uh, crystalline ice here so um, the index of refraction is 51 B 51 absorption coefficient V62 we're going to do the 50 micron grain size we're going to do a different weight fraction we're going to do 0 0.98 and 0.95 for the density Mixture two. Um, <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, now for mixture two, let's use carbon. So the uh, index of refraction would be 95. The absorption coefficients would be 106. And now the question is how large uh, grain size? Let's do um, five microns. The weight fraction is 0.02, and we'll uh, do a, um, a density of one. I don't recall the off the top of my head the amorphous carbon density. You need to look these things up before when you want to do precision work. Okay, and I should have labeled that. We can go and label that after the fact. Um, <coughs> the angle of incidence and emission. Normalize. Default there. Okay. Uh, so there's debugs in here in case you see uh, some funny numbers. Uh, we can investigate uh, what the what the uh, factors were. Okay, number of aerial mixtures, zero. Now we have H2O. There's a couple of ways we could do this. Let's try it, 0 0.98 H2O. 50 microns plus now we could point, we could say 0.02, but that's implied. Uh, so we can just say carbon no, it's not. It's five microns. Okay, just fits. Uh, I see I made a mistake there. Okay. <coughs> oh, look, uh, I didn't plan this. Um, change scale. So now we see that the adding in the carbon has really brought down the reflectance level. We approximately have the reflectance level right in this. And the, these two main ice bands are approximately uh, correct. I mean, they need to be just a little bit deeper. Um, looks like we have a good agreement out here. We have a mismatch here. And uh, one thing to note, uh, you'll always see this as being too low, right at, right at uh, about 3 point, um, between 3.2 and 3.4 microns. That's an error in the optical constants that needs to be fixed in the optical constants. So don't pay attention to that. <coughs> we obviously didn't match uh, this decrease. That's some reddening compound that is in uh, Saturn's rings, makes them look yellow. Uh, so while we got the albedo right, we don't have the, uh, the uh, reddening agent. So that requires some other uh, a different compound that's not ice and not carbon. But this gives you a good idea of, of uh, how to compute these. The two other things of note is that while we have the, the band depths here approximately correct, we don't have this correct, and we have hardly any 1.04 micron ice band and uh, a very weak 1.25 micron ice band. And that's due to 
um, it's clear uh, once you understand layered media that uh, the rings, uh, the ring particles in particular, are layered media where there's uh, fine-grained uh, ice on top of larger um, chunks of ice. So uh, a layered medium ca calculation wouldn't uh, be able to do that. No intimate mixture can match all of this and all of this. This also is, uh, this discrepancy in the shape here, is due to some um, submicron particles. So there's um, multiple grain sizes that are needed and layered media in order to fully solve the, uh, the matches to all the wavelengths here in the infrared and then a red name in the UV. So uh, if we want to save that, we exit the plot, type in that we want to save it. Um, we want to save the history. And um, uh, then we're done. We're back to the beginning. Hit greater than sign. And that closes the, uh, the command file. Uh, we can now exit uh, RadTran. And we can look at um, model two. So here's uh, all of the, um, the um, commands that we entered to run this two component model. What I would do would be to edit that and make this a little more readable uh, by moving some of the comments around. Let's go out to here. But you get the idea. Um, <coughs> move that. No, I had some. Fat fingers are getting other keys here. you get the idea. The other thing is this uh, greater than sign, that's not needed in a script uh, that terminates uh, the command input, so delete that line. Now you could then at this point change parameters here and then change uh, the, the title and run another model. Um, so you can do those much quicker than uh, going through the menus by hand each time, where any time you do things by hand, there's a likelihood of a mistake. So scripting helps reduce mistakes, and it also gives you a, a record of exactly what you did. Okay, so I mean, that, that gives you an idea. Um, <coughs> you can obviously get a lot more complex. Um, also, you can, the scripting can be up to 10 levels. So while we, uh, when you're in SpecPR or RadTran, to read this model in, uh, let, in fact, let's do that. Uh, You just, oh, that's in, I did um, spec PR, not red trend. You'd, you'd say less than and that file name, and that reads that all the commands from that file in. Now, if you accidentally inserted a line, and then the commands would be out of sequence and it, it won't produce the right result. So you've got to be careful when you're editing. Um, if you want to add a line for a comment, let's, <coughs> and let's say uh, you want to add a line here, put the backslash pound at the beginning of the line, uh, then it'll skip that line. Without, and it, so it won't displace the uh, 
the command sequence that uh, uh, for the incoming commands. And you'll see this kind of stuff in uh, touch quarter in the the uh, export system commanding. You'll see these uh, comment lines. So be sure if you want to add a, a comment where it doesn't uh, is invisible to the command processor in in the program, then start the comment at uh, column one backslash pound. Okay, um, you can turn a lot of things into variables, uh, and then you can call these as subroutines. So in here, we could take out some of this stuff, and if you want to call another subroutine, you just say less than sign, and um, you know whatever you want to call it. So you can do pretty sophisticated commanding. And you'll see these kind of things in the touch order expert system where different subroutines are called uh, depending on what the size of the spectra are uh, for, uh, for different cases. OK, I don't need that, so I'm not going to keep that one. That's a, a reasonable introduction to the commanding and uh, the different models that are possible. You can. Um, run through and explore on your own uh, a lot of the different options. Just follow the prompts. They should be um, reasonably uh, clear. If they're not, um, shoot me an email and I'll uh, uh, see about improving them if something isn't, uh, isn't completely clear. Okay, and with this, I'll end this video.